Hi there, I'm Rian, and in this course, you're going to build many apps using ARKit. You'll go from beginner to extremely high level by building 11 apps step by step. To access the full course, just click on the link in the description below. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this basic house and display that house in the phone's camera view. And the first step to doing so will be to learn about world tracking. We're going to set up the camera such that it can track the phone's orientation and position relative to the world around it. Xcode is the platform you'll be using to set up your ARKit apps. So open it up, create a new project, a single view application, call the project world tracking, press next, and create. The first thing you want to do is go to the main.storyboard and to the initial view controller, add an ARKit scene kit view. The ARKit scene kit view gives a camera view of the real world such that the user can display three dimensional content inside of this camera view. So expand the ARKit scene kit view to the edges of your super view and make sure to pin it to the bottom, top, leading, and trailing space. Open up the assistant editor and make sure to link your ARKit scene kit view to the view controller with an IB outlet called scene view. Connect the IB outlet, close the assistant editor and back to your view controller. Import ARKit to use the ARKit framework and get rid of this error and declare a constant configuration of type AR world tracking configuration. So configuration is equal to AR world tracking session configuration. World tracking is used to track the position and orientation of your device relative to the real world at all times. This is very important because if the phone doesn't know where it's positioned relative to the world around it, then it wouldn't be able to effectively display three dimensional content in certain places of the world. So make sure that as soon as the view loads, your scene view runs a session such so that it has this configuration. To do that, write self.sceneview.scene.session.run configuration. Now the device is able to track its position and orientation at all times. Now add debug options to the scene view by writing self.sceneview dot debug options is equal to an array type of debug options such that the scene view is going to show feature points so ARSCN debug options dot show feature points and the scene view is also going to show the world origin ARSCN debug options dot show world origin adding debug options doesn't really do anything in terms of functionality it simply helps us debug the app by showing us if the world origin was properly detected and if the feature points are constantly being discovered. The world origin is your starting position in the real world. So as soon as you launch the app, world tracking detects everything in your environment and keeps track of where you started. The starting position is your world origin. Feature points are simply information about features in the world around you that the device detected. The device remembers all of that information to precisely pinpoint your position at all times. This will be more clear to you when I run the app. But before running it, there is one last step we have to do, which is to go to your info.plist. Since you're using the camera, you need the property privacy. Press on the plus button, privacy camera usage description. This property displays an alert to the user asking him or her to allow the app to use the camera. If you don't put this property, your app will simply crash. Add a descriptive message to that property saying, you need the camera to display cool AR kit content. This message is going to pop up to the user prompting him to enable the camera. So run the app. Notice the alert prompting the user to allow the app to use the camera, as well as the descriptive message you gave it. You need the camera to display cool ARKit content. So enable the camera by pressing OK, and give the device a few seconds to figure out its position in the real world. 
So now if I move backwards, you should notice this three-dimensional coordinate system. We'll go over this coordinate system in more depth in other lectures. But for now, just know that this is the world origin and represents the starting position of the device relative to the real world. Once you launch the app, the scene view runs a session such that it's configured to track the device's orientation and position. After a couple of seconds, after it analyzes and recognizes the environment around it, it's able to track where my starting position is. If I move towards the origin, walk around it, or even rotate my device, the device is still able to pinpoint where my starting position is. In other words, the scene views configuration is able to track where I started, and this could only mean that the phone is always keeping track of its current position and orientation. This is awesome. Now, see these yellow dots? These are called feature points. One of the ways the device can always keep track of its position is by detecting features in its surrounding environment as unique pieces of information. That information is used to precisely pinpoint the current position and orientation of your device. In the next video, you're going to display a three-dimensional virtual object in the physical world. In the last video, you were able to set up world tracking such that the phone always knows its position and orientation, as well as its starting position. In this video, you're going to display a box in the physical world such that it's positioned 0.3 meters away from the starting position, the world origin. So first off, go to the main dot storyboard. And to the initial view controller, add a button to the bottom left. Call the button add. And pin it to the bottom left by about 20 pixels from the leading space and from the bottom space with a width and height of about 80 pixels. Add the four constraints. And I seem to have placed a height of 800 where I should have placed 80 instead. Let me just fix that in my size inspector. And it looks good. Now back into my attributes inspector, let me place a background color of white. Okay. Open up the assistant editor and link your button to the view controller with an IB action. Call the IB action add. Make sure it's an action, not an outlet. Connect the action, close the assistant editor and back to your view controller. This IB action gets triggered every time you press the add button. So every time you press it, declare a node by writing let node is equal to SCN node. So a node is simply a position in space. It has no shape, no size, and no color. Put the node inside of the scene view by writing self dot scene view dot scene dot root node dot at child node node. So the scene is what's displaying the camera view of the real world. We want to position our node inside of the scene. So the scene has a root node. The root node also has no shape, no size or color, and it's positioned exactly where your world origin is. So exactly where your starting position is. If I make this node a child of the root node, then whatever position we give this node, it's going to be positioned relative to the root node. Okay, so now the node is inside of the scene. And as I mentioned before, the node is not visible on its own. It's, it has no special attributes. We need to give it those attributes. So first, give it a shape by writing node.geometry is equal to SCN box with a width, height, and length of 0 0.1 meters. And the chamfer radius is simply how round the edges of your box are. The higher the value, the rounder the edges. We'll play with this in the future, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as zero. So by giving this a value of zero, the box will have firm edges because I'm telling the node to take away zero meters from the edges. Therefore, don't take anything away from the edges, leave it firm. And now you should give the node a color. To do that, write node.geometry.firstmaterial. First material defines the appearance of the surface of our node, of our box for that matter. 
And now write dot diffuse. Diffuse represents the color that's spread across the entire surface of our box. I'm going to give it a color of blue. So dot contents is equal to UI color dot blue. Feel free to give it any color that you want. So now you gave this node a shape. It's a box with dimensions of 0 0.1 meters and no chamfer radius. It's going to be a firm box. And you also gave the node a color that spread across its surface, a color of blue. The node is also inside of our scenes camera view. You're only missing one thing. The node sure is inside of the scenes camera view, but where is it positioned? That's right, nowhere. You need to specify the position of the node. Before going into this, let me just run the app and show you something. So let me just wait till the phone recognizes its surroundings. And as soon as it does, the world origin should load. And here is the world origin. Remember how I said that the world origin, your starting position is actually a coordinate system? Well, it is. The red line you see right here is the X axis, the horizontal axis. And the green line is the Y axis, the vertical axis. The blue line right here you see is the Z axis, which refers to depth. How far or how close something is to the origin, to the starting position, inwards or outwards. So back to Xcode, we're going to position our node relative to the root node, relative to the starting position. So write node dot position is equal to SCN vector three, zero, zero, and zero. SCN vector three represents a three dimensional vector. We need a three dimensional vector since the node's position is based on three axes the x, y, and z axes. This represents the x value, your y value, and your z value. So according to what we have right now, our root node is going to be zero meters away from the x axis, zero meters above the y axis, and zero meters from the z axis. So basically, our node should be perfectly aligned with our starting position. Run the app to see if that's the case. So if I just wait till the phone discovers the area, and as soon as it does, the world origin loads. Now, where do you think the box will be placed if I press add? That's right, the box gets placed exactly where your starting position is, since that's what we meant to do. We placed it zero meters from the x-axis, zero meters from the y, and zero meters from the z, making it perfectly aligned to our starting position. So now back to Xcode, what if I were to give the Z field a value of negative 0.3? What will happen is the box will be 0.3 meters away from the origin behind it. Behind it since we added a negative. If we took off the negative, the node would be 0.3 meters in front of the world origin. Run the app. Let me just wait till the device detects its environment and the world origin loads. And right here is the world origin. Now, if I press add, what do you think happens? And there you go. The box is placed 0.3 meters, 30 centimeters from the world origin. Now, if you look at the blue line, like I said before, that is the Z axis. And the Z axis controls how far or how close something is to the world origin. And it's pointing away from the box, meaning that the box is indeed behind the Z axis by 30 centimeters. Now here's a challenge. Try and have the box be 30 centimeters, so 0 0.3 meters in front of the world origin, not behind but in front, and about 0 0.2 meters above. Give it a try. So here's what you would do. 0 0.3 meters in front of the z-axis, that would just be a positive value for 0 
And if you want to place something above or below the world origin, what you would have to do is change the y value. We're going to position it relative to the y axis. So to place it 0.2 meters above the origin, just put 0.2 for the y field and you should be good to go. Run the app. So I'm just going to wait till the phone detects its environment and as soon as it does, the world origin should load right here. And if I press add, where do you think the box will be placed? So 0.2 meters above the y axis and 0.3 meters from the blue line in front of it. And there is our box. 0.2 meters above the y axis and 0.3 meters in front of the blue line, the z axis. Now try and place the box 0.2 meters to the right of the world origin. Pause the video and give this one a try. So I believe the challenge was to place the box 0.3 meters to the right. And what's responsible for horizontal alignment is the X axis. So if you want to place something to the right or to the left of the world origin, you have to change this X field. To place something to the right, the value would be positive. To put something to the left, the value would be negative. We want to place it to the right, so just leave this as a positive and run the app. So as I'm running the app, according to this, the box should be 0.3 meters to the right, 0.2 meters above, and 0.3 meters in front of the world origin. So let me just wait till the world origin loads while it's detecting its environment, and I think it just loaded, it's right here. So if I add my box, here's what should happen. The box should be 0.3 meters to the right of the world origin. So let me move to the right. 0.2 meters above the y axis, the green line, so go 0.2 meters above. And now if I point my phone such that it's looking 0.3 meters to the front of the z axis, there is our box. So here is your next challenge. Try and place the box 0.3 meters to the left of the world origin, 0.2 meters below, and 0.5 meters behind it. Pause the video and give this one a try. I believe the challenge was 0.3 meters to the left and what controls horizontal alignment is our X field. So put negative 0.3 since it's to the left and what controls the vertical alignment is our Y axis, the green line. Put a negative 0.2 for that one since it's going to be below the vertical Y axis and 0.3 meters behind the Z axis. Just put a negative 0.3 for this. Actually, I believe it was 0.5 the challenge was. Okay, so run the app. Okay, so let me just wait until the device has a good read on its environment. As soon as it does, the world origin loads. And now if I press add, the box should be 0.3 meters to the left of the x-axis, 0.2 meters below the y-axis, and look, it's 0.5 meters behind the z-axis right there. And that's it for positioning nodes. In the next video, let's look at resetting a scene view session. In your last video, you learned how to create a node, give it a shape, color, and position it relative to your starting position, the world origin. In this video, we're going to look at resetting a scene view session. In Xcode, change this back to 0, 0, and negative 0.3. Run the app. And you've seen this before. It's aligned horizontally and vertically since you set the X and Y fields as zero, but it's 0 0.3 meters away from the Z axis of the world origin behind it. You've probably noticed that if you keep pressing add over and over, nothing happens. Well, that makes sense since you're always adding the box in the same position every time. So you are indeed adding a box every time. It just doesn't look like anything is happening since it's always in the same position. Now, what if I wanted the box to be positioned somewhere else? The box is positioned relative to the origin. So that would mean that I would have to change the position of the world origin. But how do you change your starting position? That's where you started, right? Well, the answer is that you reset the scene view session 
such that it detects a new starting position. So in your storyboard, add a button. Right button, put it to the bottom right of your view controller, pin it 20 pixels from the bottom space and 20 pixels from your trailing space. Give it a width and height of 80 pixels. Add the four constraints, go to your attributes inspector and give the button a background color of orange or whatever color you like, it's up to you. Call this button reset. Open up the assistant editor and link the reset button with an IB action to your view controller. Call the IB action reset, connect it and close the assistant editor back to your view controller. Every time we press reset, first we have to pause the session. So write self dot scene view dot session dot pause. Or you know what, instead of having this in the reset IB action, we're going to make a separate function for it. So write func restart session, but no argument type and no return value, and then just call a restart session and reset. So now every time you press reset, this function gets triggered and inside this function, we're going to pause the scene view session. So self dot scene view dot session dot pause. So when you pause the session, it stops keeping track of your position or orientation. Now remove the box node from the scene view by writing self dot scene view dot scene dot root node dot enumerate child nodes. Put the first argument as node and the second argument, just leave it blank. We're not going to use it for now. Okay, now I explained before that node is a child of the root node. You can even see it right here, root, root node dot add child node node. So we're enumerating through every single child node of the root node, the box node being one of them. And so the box node is what we're going to remove from the parent node. So right node dot remove from parent node. By removing the box from the root node or its parent node, we're removing it from the scene view. Now that we got rid of the box, rerun the session such that it has the same configuration. So self.sceneView.session.run configuration. As for the options, however, we're going to have the scene such that it resets tracking. So it would forget about your old starting position and make a new one based on where you are at the moment. And we're going to remove existing anchors. And the reason this isn't working is because it should be inside of an array. So autocomplete should work now. Dot remove existing anchors, which makes sense because this is a collection of things and array is a collection type. But anyway, remove existing anchors. An anchor is simply information of the position and orientation of an object in the scene view. We're removing all of that information as well and starting from scratch. So run the app, press add, it gives you a box, walk away from the origin, reset, give the device time to reestablish its surroundings, add a box again, and it shows up in a new position since our starting position changed. So the box is positioning itself relative to a new starting origin. In the next video, we're going to customize our box and place it in random locations instead of just one. In the last video, we learned how to reset a scene view session so that we can reposition nodes based on a new starting world origin. In this video, we're going to further customize nodes and position them in random places. So first, change the chamfer radius to about 0.03. So what this will do is it will cut off about three centimeters, 0.03 meters from the edges of the box, giving it a rounder edge. Run the app. If you look at the box very closely, notice that the edges are rounder. If you want to make a sphere, back to Xcode, make sure that all of these dimensions are the same and make the chamfer radius one half of all of these dimensions. So write 0 0.1 divided by two. So the trick is if all of the dimensions have the same measurement and you divide that measurement by two, you will get a sphere. Run the app. Wait till the world origin loads, press add, and it gives us a sphere. This will be useful once you get to drawing in three dimensions. 
For now though, change this back to 0 0.03 and give the box a specular light by writing node.geometry.firstmaterial.specular.contents is equal to uicolor.white. So first material is the appearance of a surface as I explained before, and specular is light that's reflected off of a surface we're giving that light a color of white. So a white light is going to reflect off of the surface of the box. Run the app to see how this works. Wait till the world origin loads. Press add and notice that nothing happens. There is no white light reflecting. The reason is you need to give the scene view a source of light for the node to be able to reflect it. So in viewed load, right when we run our session, we're going to add lighting by writing self.sceneView.auto enables default lighting is equal to true. By doing this, you're putting an omnidirectional light source in the scene view. An omnidirectional light source is simply light that spreads across the entire scene. Now that we have light, run the app again. Wait till the world origin loads, press add, and you get a reflection of white from the box. Now have it reflect a color of orange by replacing the white specular light with an orange color. Run the app, press add, and it reflects an orange color. Now, instead of positioning the box in one place, we're going to position it in many places. This function is inside of your resources folder. Make sure to copy it into your Xcode project. So this function takes a minimum float value and a maximum float value, and it gives you a float value in between. This will be used to place the box in random directions instead of just one. Now, don't worry about this complicated return value. Just know that it gives you a random value in the range that you give it. So back into your add IB action, right let x is equal to random numbers between negative 0.3 and 0.3. So what this will do for us is that it will return a float value that's between 0.3 meters to the left of the world origin and 0.3 meters to the right. Do the same thing for the y value. Let y is equal to random numbers between negative 0.3 meters below the origin and 0.3 meters above the world origin. Do the same thing for the z value, and this will give us a random float value that's between negative 0.3 meters behind the world origin and 0.3 meters in front of it. And instead of having these static values for the positioning, just put x, y, and z. And so now we have a random horizontal, vertical, and depth for every single box that we add. To test this, just run the app. Let me just wait till the world origin loads. And as soon as it loads, let me back away from it and start adding some boxes. And notice all of these boxes that are getting added in random positions every time. This is pretty cool. And how they're all reflecting an orange color of light. In the next video, we're going to look at default and custom shapes. In the last video, we customized a box and placed it in random positions of the scene view. In this video, we're going to look at more default and custom shapes aside from the box. First, we're going to start with the capsule. So a capsule, an SCN capsule, looks like a cylinder, but it has two spherical ends. We can modify the height of the capsule as well as its radius, its thickness. So back in Xcode, instead of declaring the box, let me just comment all of this out and write node dot geometry is equal to SCN capsule. And the capsules dimensions are going to be the following. First, we're going to change the cap radius. Let me just fix the autocomplete. So as I said before, the cap radius is simply how thick the capsule is. So I'm going to make it about 0.1 meters thick and its height will be about 0.3 meters. 
So let me just keep the specular and diffuse colors and run the app. Wait till the world origin loads. As soon as it detects the environment, once it does, add the capsule. And you know what? One thing I want to change before anything is place the capsule right in front of me. We're done with this random positioning stuff. Align it horizontally and vertically and place it 0.3 meters behind the z-axis since that is easier to work with. Just rerun the app. And so if I just wait till the world origin loads, once it detects all these surfaces, there it is, press add. And there is our capsule right in front of us. It looks pretty cool. It looks like a basic cylinder with rounded caps, which is essentially what it is. Okay, now on to our next default shape. The next one is going to be the cone. An SCN cone has a bottom radius that we can modify, a top radius, as well as a height. So back into our Xcode project, instead of giving a geometry of a capsule, let's give it a geometry of a cone. So node.geometry is equal to SCN cone. And like I said before, we can modify the top radius. Here the top radius is pointy because it has a value of zero meters. I am going to make my top radius a value of 0 0.1 meters. The bottom radius will be about 0 0.3 meters with a height of, let's say 0 0.3 meters. Run the app to see what the cone looks like when it's in the scene view. So if I just wait till the world origin loads, once the phone detects its environment, add the cone, and there it is. Notice how the top is not pointy since we gave it a radius of 0 0.1 meters, and the bottom radius is 0 0.3 meters, much bigger than the top. Now here's a challenge. Try and make this cone look like a cylinder. Pause the video and give it a try. So to make the cone look like a cylinder, all you have to do is make the top equal to the bottom. So 0.3 for the top radius, or you know what? Let's just make both of them 0.1 meters. It doesn't really matter as long as these are the same. Run the app. Just wait till the world origin loads for the phone to detect its environment. Press add. And there is our cone or cylinder for that matter. Okay. So the next shape we're going to look at is the cylinder itself. Ironically, we just made a cylinder out of a cone, but this time we're going to mess around with the actual cylinder shape and there's not much to a cylinder. You can control its radius, basically how thick it is, as well as its height. So instead of declaring a cone, declare a cylinder. So write node.geometry is equal to SCN cylinder with a radius of about 0 0.2 meters, 20 centimeters, and a height of 0.2 meters. And you probably already know what this is going to look like, so let's just run the app. As soon as my world origin loads, I'm just going to add the cylinder. Let me just back off a little bit. There is our cylinder. It has a radius of 0 0.2 meters, so a diameter of 40 centimeters, which is why it's so wide. Let me just get a better angle of it. And it has a height of 20 centimeters as well. Okay, now the next shape we're going to look at, let me just go to the Apple documentation, is an SCN sphere. An SCN sphere is a pretty basic shape. You've probably seen it before. All we can modify for the sphere is the radius itself. So why don't you pause the video and try to make your own sphere node. Okay, so here's how I would do it. Node.geometry is equal to SCN sphere. With a radius, I'm going to give it a radius of 0 0.1 meters, so a diameter of 20 centimeters. Run the app. Okay, I'm just going to wait till my world origin loads so that the phone properly detects its environment. Once it does, press add. And there is our sphere. There's not much to it. It simply has a circular radius. 
Now on to our next object. And the reason that we're looking at all of these shapes is because in future apps, we're actually going to use all of these shapes to make 3D models. So the next shape we're going to look at for now is our SCN tube. A tube is almost the exact same thing as a cylinder. However, a cylinder only has one radius, whereas the tube has two of them. One to control the inner radius, so how wide the hole is, and one outer radius, how thick the entire tube is in general. Back to Xcode, let me declare this SCN tube. Node.geometry is equal to SCN tube. And the inner radius, how wide the hole is, is going to be 0.2 meters. You make the outer radius about 0.3 meters. So the tube is going to have a hole with a radius of 0.2 meters. So the hole in general is going to have a diameter of 0.4 meters. And from the center all the way to the edge of the tube, we're going to have an outer radius of 0.3 meters. The height will be about 0.5 meters. And let's run the app to see how this looks. So if I just wait till my world origin loads and then press add, let me just step away from this a little bit. And there is our tube. The hole has a radius of 0.2 meters and the tube in general has an entire radius of 0.3. So the tube has a diameter of 0.6 meters and the hole has a diameter of 0.4 meters. Now the next shape we're going to look at is a torus. So back to our Apple documentation. The torus kind of looks like a ring. It has a ring radius which extends from the middle to the edge of the ring and a pipe radius which controls the thickness of the ring. We're going to use this torus shape in the future to make our basketball hoop. So for now, let's just declare a torus inside of our Xcode project. Node.geometry is equal to SCN torus. And the ring radius, so how wide the torus is from the center all the way to the edge, is going to be about 0.3 meters and the pipe radius, which controls the thickness of the ring, is going to be about 0.2 meters. Or you know what, 0.1 meters. Your pipe radius should always be smaller than your ring radius, because your ring radius minus your pipe radius is basically how big the hole of your torus. So if you had a ring radius of let's say 0.2 meters, and a pipe radius of 0.3, your hole would be negative 0.1 meters wide, which makes no sense. You would kind of have an inverted hole of some sort. Your torus would just look really weird. Whenever you're building a 3D model that requires a torus, just make sure that your ring radius is always larger than your pipe radius. And before running the app, let me just start placing the nodes about negative 0.7 meters behind the world origin. Now let me just run it. Okay, so I'm just going to wait till the world origin loads and then press add. So here is our torus. It has a ring radius of 0.3, which extends from the center all the way to the edge and a pipe radius. So the thickness of the ring has a radius of 0.1 meters. Now the next shape we're going to look at is a plane. To find the plane in the Apple documentation, just write SCN plane. And right here, you'll see that the plane is simply a vertical surface with a width and a height and it has no extrusion depth whatsoever it's simply a flat surface with no depth so let's declare a plane and the plane is something we're going to use a lot in this course especially for our vehicle app when we have to build a road so the width of the plane is going to be about 0.2 meters and do the same thing for the height run the app if I just wait till the world origin loads and then add my plane, here it is. From here, it looks like a box, but if I go from the side, you'll notice that the plane has no depth. It's just a flat surface with a width and a height of 0.2 meters. 
Okay, now on to our pyramid. Find the pyramid, I'm just going to write SCN pyramid to find it in our Apple documentation. And the pyramid is exactly what you would expect it to be. It has a length to control its depth, a width and a height. So let's declare a pyramid right into our project. Node.geometry is equal to SCN pyramid. The pyramid is going to have a width of 0.1 meters, a height of 0.1 meters, and a length, a depth of 0.1 meters. Let's run the app to see how this looks. Okay, now if I just press add, here is our pyramid. From here, it looks like a triangle, but this pyramid actually has a depth. So if I just go from the side, it has a depth of 0.1 meters, which we specified right here. Okay. Now we're going to go into some cool stuff, which is the Bezier path. The Bezier path is used to create custom shapes from a path that you draw. So what do I mean by this? First off, right let path is equal to UI Bezier path. We're going to start our path zero meters from where you positioned it. So two CG point, X is zero and Y is zero. Think of the game Connect the Dots. If you connect every dot with a line, eventually you're going to form a drawing. This is the same concept. We're going to draw lines from one point to another until we form a custom shape. Let's remove this node dot geometry since we're not going to put a pyramid anymore. So we're aligning our path exactly where our node is currently positioned. And then we're going to add a line from this position. So right path dot add line to CG point X being zero and now Y will be 0 0.2. So we're starting our path wherever it's positioned. So right here, and then we're adding a line then that goes 0 0.2 meters upwards. So let's assign this to our geometry and to do that, right? Let shape is equal to SCN shape. The path is simply going to be the path that you drew and the extrusion depth basically gives your drawing a certain thickness. We're going to give it a thickness of 0 0.2 meters. And now assign this shape to the geometry by writing node.geometry is equal to shape. And if you're not sure what happened, it'll be more clear to you once I run the app and explain it. Just going to wait till the world origin loads. As soon as it loads, add your Bezier path. And this is the line that we drew. The line starts zero meters from the current position that you gave it, and it goes 0 0.2 meters upwards. So we drew a line from zero meters of the position that you gave it, such that it goes 0.2 meters upwards, and the line has a thickness, an extrusion depth of 0.2 meters. And from the top, we're going to go diagonally up. I want you to pause the video and try and do that one yourself. So we need to add another line that goes diagonally upwards from this position. So what you would do is write path dot add line to CG point. Since we want to go diagonally, that means that we have to change its horizontal positioning. So write X 0 0.2 and Y 0 0.3. So here's what would happen. Our path at first was horizontally aligned to the current position. So now our path is going to end up being 0 0.2 meters to the right of this position and 0 0.3 meters above it, which is basically going to be 0 0.2 meters to the right of the previous point in the path and 0 0.1 meters above the previous point in the path, which is essentially going to form a diagonal line that goes 0 0.2 meters to the right and 0 0.1 meters above. Run the app. Add your path. And this makes perfect sense. The shape is perfectly aligned with where we positioned our node. And then you're drawing a line that goes 0 0.2 meters upwards from the current position. So now we're going 0 0.2 meters to the right 
and 0.1 meters above the current vertical position, which is 0.3, therefore drawing a diagonal path from that current point. Now from this point, we want to draw a diagonal path that goes downwards. So how would you do this? Pause the video and give this one a try. So we need to go diagonally downwards. Our x value has to change such that it goes to the right, and our y value has to change as well, such that it goes back down. From this point, we're going to add another line. So write path dot add line to CG point. And now from the position that's 0 0.2 meters to the right of the origin, we're going to go another 0 0.2 meters, so 0 0.4 but this time we're going to travel back downwards. We're going to travel back to 0.2 meters above the origin. So we're starting off such that the path is exactly where the node is positioned, perfectly aligned horizontally and vertically. But then we're moving 0.2 meters upwards such that the path is now 0.2 meters from the y axis of the origin and then we're moving 0.2 meters to the right, as well as 0.1 meters upwards from the previous point. So we're moving at an upwards diagonal. And then from there, we're moving another 0.2 meters to the right, so 0.4 meters from the origin. And we're moving back downwards by 0.1 meters. So this is going to lead to us drawing a diagonal path downwards. 0.2 meters to the right and 0.1 meters downwards. Let's run the app to see how this looks. Okay, so I'm just going to wait till my world origin loads. And as soon as it does, add my path. And this makes sense as well. So we're starting at the current position, 0, 0. And then we're moving 0.2 meters above the position. And then we're moving 0.2 meters to the right, as well as 0.1 meters above the current vertical position. So now we're 0.2 meters to the right of the origin and 0.3 meters above. Then we're moving another 0.2 meters to the right, such that we're 0.4 meters to the right of the origin, but we're moving 0.1 meters back down. So now our position is 0.4 meters to the right of this position and 0.2 meters above it. Now we want to go back down such that we're 0 meters vertically from this position, but we're still 0.4 meters to the right. So why don't you try and do that yourself and see what kind of results you come up with. So pause the video and try it out. So here is what you should have come up with. Path.add line to CG point. Our x value will remain the same since we're not going to be moving in the horizontal direction, but we want to go back down to the previous position. So put 0 right here. For the final position, we're moving 0.2 meters down, and the horizontal positioning stays the same. So run the app to see what this looks like. Let me just wait till the world origin loads. Add your Bezier path and look at what this forms, a house. So let's go over this. We're starting off at the current position, perfectly aligned horizontally and vertically. Then we're going 0.2 meters up. Then we're moving a diagonal distance 0.2 meters to the right and 0.1 meters above. So right now we're 0.2 meters to the right of this position and 0.3 meters above it. And from this point, we're going back down 0.1 meters. So now we're 0.2 meters above this position, but we're 0.4 meters to the right of it. So 0.2 meters to the right of this one, which makes for a downwards diagonal line. And then from this distance, the horizontal positioning stays the same, but we're drawing a line that goes downwards. And with our extrusion depth of 0.2 meters, which is giving this Bezier path a depth, it forms a perfect house. 
So we just made our first custom shape by drawing lines from one point to another. And there are a lot of softwares where you can make custom shapes, software such as this one. If you were to use it, you would manually make your own custom shape. And once you make it, it would convert that custom shape for you in code. UI Bezier path code that you would just copy into your Xcode project to load the custom shape that you made. There are many apps just like this one. For example, there is the Bezier code vector drawing to Objective-C code. There are some apps for Swift code, but it's really not hard to convert Objective-C to Swift. There are many tools to do that. So this is another example of it converting images to UI Bezier path code right here. And that is it for this video. The point of this video was to show you all of the default shapes that we're going to use later on in this course to build many complex 3D models like, like our portal and our basketball court. In the next video, we're going to look at relative positioning. In this video, we're going to position nodes relative to other nodes. The main theme behind this lecture will be parent nodes and child nodes. So let me just remove all of this. We don't need this code anymore. And simply position the pyramid relative to the root node. So right now, the pyramid is a child of the root node. And as you know from before, the root node is basically a node that's positioned exactly where the world origin is. And since the pyramid is a child of the root node, it's going to be positioned relative to the root node. So now position the pyramid about 0.2 meters to the right of the root node, about 0.3 meters above it, and negative 0.2 meters behind it. And your challenge is to try and place a cylinder 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid, 0.2 meters above, and 0.3 meters behind it. Pause the video and give it a try. So first off, just declare your cylinder node. Let cylinder node is equal to SCN node. The node is going to have a geometry of an SCN cylinder. With a radius, I'm going to give it a small radius of 0.05 meters and a height of 5 centimeters as well. Going to give the cylinder a diffuse color of red. Remember that diffuse is the color that's spread across the surface of a node. UI color dot red. And the challenge was to place the cylinder 0.3 meters to the left, 0.2 meters above, and 0.3 meters behind the pyramid. So right, cylinder node dot position is equal to SCN vector 3. And so to place the cylinder 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid, here's what you would do. You would say that, hey, the pyramid is 0.3 meters to the right of the world origin. So if I place the cylinder node 0.1 meters to the left of the root node, it will be 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid. So if you put negative 0.1 here and position the cylinder node relative to the root node by just copying and pasting this and putting your cylinder node. So by positioning our cylinder 0.1 meters to the left of the root node, it will be 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid. Now we want it to position the cylinder 0.2 meters above the pyramid node. And so by placing the cylinder 0.5 meters above the root node, it will be 0.2 meters above the pyramid node. And we wanted to place it 0.3 meters behind the pyramid. And so by placing the cylinder node 0.5 meters behind the scene view's root node, then it will be 0.3 meters behind the pyramid node. So this was a bit complex. We had to do some math to position the cylinder node relative to the pyramid. So let's run the app to see if this worked out. Just going to wait till my world origin loads. And as soon as it does, add my nodes. Our cylinder is 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid, 0.2 meters above it, as you can clearly see. And it's also behind it by 0.3 meters. Now, what if I told you we could have done this in a much easier way? So the initial challenge was to place the cylinder node 
0 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid node. So why not just write negative 0 0.3, so 0 0.3 meters to the left. And now to place it 0 0.2 meters above, why not just write 0 0.2? And if you want to place it 0 0.3 meters behind the pyramid node, why not put negative 0 0.3? But how will this work? For example, if the cylinder node is positioned 0 0.3 meters to the left of the root node, then it's not 0 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid. It would be about 0 0.5 meters to the left of it. What if I told you we don't have to position the cylinder node relative to the root node? By making the cylinder node a child of the pyramid node, so by writing node dot at child node cylinder node, the cylinder is now positioned relative to the pyramid. So now this should work. The cylinder should be 0 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid, 0.2 meters above it, and 0.3 meters behind it. This was much easier than doing all that math. So run the app to see if this works out. Just going to wait till the world origin loads. And it works out perfectly. This was a lot easier than doing all that math. What I wanted you to take from all this is that at first, the cylinder node was a child of the scene view's root node. And so to position the cylinder relative to the pyramid, we had to do some pretty annoying calculations. However, once we made the cylinder a child of the pyramid, then whatever position we gave the cylinder was relative to the pyramid. Having done that, it was much easier to position the cylinder 0 0.3 meters to the left of the pyramid, 0 0.2 meters above, and 0 0.3 meters behind it. As you can see, it took no calculations whatsoever. All you have to do is declare it. So now using relative positioning, we're going to make a custom shape. So instead of a cylinder node, declare a box node with a geometry of an SCN box. The box will have a width of 0 0.1 meters, a height of 0 0.1 meters, and a length of 0 0.1 meters as well, with a chamfer radius of zero. Wherever it says cylinder node, replace that with box node instead. And instead of giving the box a color of red, give it a color of blue, whereas the pyramid will have a color of red. And now the plan is to position this box right under the pyramid to make a house shape. So how do I place the box node right under the house? Well, let me start off with a default position of 0, 0, and 0, and see what this looks like. So if I just wait till the world origin loads, and as soon as it loads, add your supposed house. And this didn't work out so well. Here's my assumption. It looks like the center of the box is positioned at the bottom of the pyramid, and from the bottom of the pyramid, half of the box extends upwards. And I can also conclude that the box is 10 centimeters long. So if the center of the box is at the bottom of the pyramid, and the distance between the center of the box to the top is 5 centimeters, if I place the box 5 centimeters downwards, then the top of the box should be at the bottom of the pyramid, which is exactly what we need for us to form a house. We need the top to be at the bottom of the pyramid. So give this a try. Right now, dot position is equal to negative 0 0.05 meters, so five centimeters downwards. If I do this, the top of the box should be at the bottom of the pyramid. Now, to get comfortable with positioning relative to other nodes, it's basically just trial and error. Start off with a default position like what I just had before, 0, 0, and 0. Make a conclusion with what you saw in that default position, and then fix that position accordingly. We fixed it by placing the box 5 centimeters downwards. Let's see if that worked. Run the app. If I press Add, and there is our house. The, the top of the box is right under the pyramid as I predicted. Now, what if I wanted to give the walls a door? Back to the Xcode project, stop running the app, and write let door node 
is equal to SCN node with a geometry of an SCN plane. We looked at planes in the last lecture and we determined that planes are simply flat vertical surfaces. So give this plane a width of about three centimeters and a height of six centimeters. This should be a fair size. Give the door node a color of brown. So door node dot geometry dot first material dot diffuse. Remember the fuse is the color that's spread across the surface of a node. We're giving that surface a color of brown. So I want to place the door node at the edge of the box. We're positioning the door relative to the box. So what should the next step be? Pause the video and give this one a try. So I'm hoping you did the following. Since we're positioning the door relative to the box, make the door a child of the box. So box node dot add child node door node. So now we want to place the door at the edge of the box. First, let me start off by giving the door node a random position. So door node dot position is equal to SCN vector 3, 0, 0, and 0. I didn't even put any thought into this. And let me just run the app to see what this looks like at the moment. So just wait till the world origin loads. And as soon as the world origin loads, let me add my house. And you can't even see the plane, the door. Was it even added to the scene view? Well, it was. It's just that the box node and the pyramid node, they both have a coordinate system that's exactly in their center. So inside of the box node, right at the center, there is a coordinate system. And we aligned that door node perfectly with the coordinate system of the box, zero meters away from it. And so since the door node is exactly at the center of the box, first off, we can conclude that the box has a depth of 10 centimeters. So if the door node is exactly at the center of the box, then that means that the door is five centimeters away from the edge. How did I conclude this? Well, the box node has a depth of 10 centimeters. And so that could only mean that the distance between the center of the box to the edge is five centimeters. So if I place the door node five centimeters away from the center of the box, it should be right at the edge. Run the app. If I just wait till the world origin loads and then add my house, the door node is five centimeters away from the center of the box, which puts it right at the edge. The reason why the door node is acting this way is because it is right at the edge of the box. We need to place it a little bit in front of the edge so that it stops interfering with the edges of the box node. Instead of 0.05, place it a little bit in front of the edge. So put 0.053 or something, three millimeters away from the edge and we should be good to go. So if I just wait till the world origin loads and then I add my house, there it is, our door is right in front of our box, about three millimeters away. And now I can conclude that vertically, the center of the node is vertically aligned with the center of the box. And so if I go back to my Xcode, so the box node has a height of 10 centimeters. So the distance from the center of the box node to the bottom edge should be five centimeters. The door node's center is perfectly aligned with the center of the box node. So the distance from the center of the door node to the bottom edge of the box node is also five centimeters. And so from the center of the box node, the door node extends downwards by three centimeters. So if I just do five centimeters minus three, I can conclude that the bottom of the door node is two centimeters away from the bottom edge of the box node. So if I move the door node downwards by two centimeters, it should be right at the bottom edge of the box and I moved it down 20 centimeters, it should be two centimeters. So let me run the app to see what this looks like. If I just wait till the world origin loads and then add my house, there you go. The door node is positioned right at the bottom edge of our house. The last thing I can tell you is to be comfortable with making custom shapes with relative positioning, you just have to keep practicing. At first, it's going to be a game of trial and error, but eventually you'll get the hang of it. 
So if you want to make more custom shapes with the relative positioning, always start with a default position, which in our case, we used a default position at first of 0, 0, 0. And then from that position, make conclusions on how you need to modify the position to get the custom shape that you want. And that is it for the introduction of this course. To access the full version of this course and make really cool apps, make sure to click the link in the description below.